I know some of you probably feel like this. <laughs> Oddly enough, I don't. <laughs> I don't know what. I think because I've spent more than half my life behind a camera lens and looking at the world through a camera lens, doing this kind of thing, and the fact that I've been on the net since 1990 and, you know, doing all kind of stuff, it's, I don't know, it's a little different for me. It's not necessarily the medium by which meetings are held. It's more just having to go to more meetings. Um, when I, before spring break, I averaged anywhere from two to three meetings a week. And of course, they, most of them were in person. Sometimes it was online because people were in different places. But um, right around spring break, when we started meeting to plan everything, uh, it upped and I was going to four to five meetings a day and all virtually. So it was more for me, the meeting frequency. But anyway, it is real. This is real. So why is video conferencing so tiring? Okay, so there is, and you know, Trenton's here. He can talk, you know, he can attest to this probably. And Denise, your brain actually works harder to process different things visually, because usually, uh, we process information via different ways, right? Visually, auditorily, tactily. Um, when we do things like this, you're relying a lot on your, your visual um, processing to take in, not just, you know, you see people there, but you're trying to process nonverbal cues, which, you know, you're talking about people in a, a small, window and if there's a lot of people on your screen and you're in gallery view and you're like hmm okay what's happening who's doing what and what kind of cues can I get from them so your brain gets overtaxed because you're trying to take in all this information using one sensory um, mechanism versus all of them uh, technical issues can be a, a problem for people and, you know, a lot of times, <laughs> invariably, somebody comes on and they're like, can you hear me? That's like the first thing they say, can you hear me? So um, if you notice in uh, Zoom, if you open the participants window or in the bottom menu, and I keep my bottom menu uh, up all the time, there's a meter, a little microphone icon with a meter, and it'll show if your audio is going out. Um, now, of course, some people cannot hear, they cannot see, the screen share is not working, or they're having trouble logging in. So all of these things can be a hindrance to just coming together, meeting, doing what you need to do. Um, also, uh, you see number three here, I'm ready for my close up. We're all we're all close to each other, right? <laughs> Virtually, but still. <laughs> so it's, it's weird for us because normally, you know, we have full bodies that we're looking at in a room and, you know, this person might be across over there. And so it feels sometimes like people are just in your face. And so that, you know, kind of lends to trying to like, okay, this is too much for me. <laughs> And, you know, I'm here sort of, right? A lot of times uh, we go to these things, we're in meetings and it's like, okay, it's there, fine. I'm gonna, <laughs> you know, I'm gonna work on this here. I'm gonna, okay, I'm listening. Okay, I'm kind of here, you know, and it, it can be distracting for people, especially if uh, you're expecting people's attention and whatnot. Me, I just roll with it because, you know, like I said, I've been doing it for probably 15 years. So I'm just kind of used to it. And, but I know for a lot of people, it just feels like this. <laughs> Whether that's you or everyone and everyone's just like deer in headlights going, oh my gosh, okay, I have to pretend like I'm paying attention. You know, and I'm sure for those of you who've been teaching on Zoom, you kind of wonder about that with your students are they paying attention right and 
depending on how your class is, you may allow students to um, not have their camera on or sometimes you might require it. Um, there's different ways to handle that. You can have students check in. So uh, classes that I'm in as a student, um, we never use our video except in the beginning, the instructor just says, oh, you know, just say hi, how are you doing, da 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 da. And then at that point, we'll turn off, you know, we'll turn on our video so that they can see, yes, hi, I'm here kind of thing, <laughs> you know, and then they allow us to keep our video off. But as an instructor, that's something that you decide. Um, so the main thing is, well, okay, that's all well and good, but what do we do about it? How, how do we combat this? tiredness that we have from being in these meetings all the time, teaching classes like this. And then we go home and we want to communicate with friends and family and we do it using the same tools. So let's look at some of those possibilities. Okay, so when I was looking at what other people were saying about how to combat Zoom exhaustion, not one of them mentioned about the kind of equipment you have. Um, when my meetings had increased uh, during spring break and into June, that first week, by the second day, my ears were so sore. And I had to rethink the equipment I was using because you, you have to be there, you have to listen. And um, there can be issues if you just have the speaker from your computer and the mic from your computer and, you know, it can create feedback loops and stuff like that. So, you know, I prefer to at least have headsets on. So, um, these, these are the type of headsets that I have. They're good, they're reliable. It's hard to see, but you can see it's just a small round earpiece, right? And they're pretty cushioned, you, you know, but no amount of cushioning helps, trust me, when you're doing this all the time. These are not bad in price and they're very reliable. It's wired and USB. So a couple of things that I've done and tried, um, and I will tell you that Bluetooth doesn't work overly well, but I do have Bluetooth earbuds that has a microphone in it. And um, some people don't like earbuds. Um, I mostly use this uh, on my phone, if I'm on my phone doing stuff, whether it's video conferencing or just talking on the phone. Um, if it's going to be a longer conversation, I'll use these because Bluetooth works great with my phone. Um, these were free because I bought an a iPad a number of years ago. So if you ever see those deals and you're able, you're looking to replace a device or a laptop and they have these deals where they give you free stuff, Go for it. These things I think retailed for like between a hundred to two hundred dollars, and I got it for free because I bought an iPad. Um, the other type of headset that I have, and there's two types. Uh, one has wireless only. One has wireless and Bluetooth. Are these Logitech H800s? They're super lightweight. They're wireless. They come with a little dongle that you plug in. And the wireless only configuration, I think is about between 60, 70 bucks. This one is between 70, 80. And I think I got them for under 70 because they were on sale. And it's just got the little microphone here. You know, just foam padding. They're not super padded, but they're super lightweight. So that's something that I use at home. What you see me using now is my ideal setup. The most comfortable headsets I ever had are these. These are Sennheisers. I forget the model and they're not cheap. They're about 200 bucks, but they're my production headsets. So when I go on shoots and stuff like that, and I'm going to show them to you right now, you can see the earpieces are oval. The padding is on the outside and there's a recessed area here that your ear sits comfortably in. When I switch to using this, it's like I could have them on all day and not notice. Um, and they're good quality. They're just regular headsets that you plug into the headset uh, port of your computer 
and I realized that the new Mac laptops don't have it, <laughs> which is kind of a disadvantage, but um, you know, if you can find an adapter and they do make little adapters that cost about $7 that you can plug a, um, we call it either one eighth inch or a 3.5 millimeter mini plug. And you can plug it in and you plug the USB into your computer. So there's options. And then my microphone. It's a USB microphone. And we found that USB works so much better than anything else, especially nowadays you have a, most of the computers and laptops don't have um, separate microphone inputs anymore. The same kind of one eighth inch or mini 3.55 millimeter mini plug. So uh, USB works. This one was about a hundred dollars. They make others and you can actually find them. I saw um, we have the Blue Yetis. They're great. We have a Snowball. They're great as well. They're very high quality and they don't cost a whole lot of money. You know, the kind of equipment you use to me is important because if you're comfortable, you're going to stay with it. You're not going to be thinking, oh, my ears hurt so bad. I just need to take these headsets off. So the other thing is location. Um, I know Miles Nire uh, had done some ergonomic stuff, so we won't get too much into that. But um, where you are matters, um, especially if you're working from home. And I know a lot of uh, our instructors are still going to be teaching from home and students obviously are going to be doing uh, their classes at home. Um, what they found, especially with younger students, and this works for everyone as well, is you have a designated area in your house, and that's just for work or school. Don't have it like, oh, I'm just going to sit on my bed in my bedroom, or, oh, you know, I mean, and I say this, but I sit on my couch, but <laughs> it's, I have two different areas in my house that's like office space. But, you know, a lot of times I end up lying down on my couch, so it works for me. <laughs> so, but they have found when you have a specific area in your house that's designated as, okay, when I'm here, I'm working, or if I'm a student and I'm here, I'm doing class. And then, you know, at other times, like you're going to... Uh, talk with your family or whatever if it's a laptop especially yeah go to a different part of your house make it more casual and comfortable um the other thing about location and this is for others that uh are in meetings with you is be aware of what's behind you now here it's just my office it's just a bunch of crap you know no big deal nothing you know nothing that i have to cover up in my house it's just a wall um, but I know that sometimes people are concerned because it's like, oh, well, I don't want people to see, you know, my mess or, you know, it goes into the hallway. <clears throat> also be aware of if you have a bright light source behind you, because then you become dark because webcams, um, do auto iris, right? So it'll close it down because things are too dark behind you. Other things you can do, um, I just have this little clip on light here. So if I needed more light on me, I could bounce it off the wall. I could do all kinds of things to make it more light. But I generally get light from my other computer monitor here and from my main monitor. So um, they also have these little ring lights that you can put around a webcam and they're fairly inexpensive. I believe they're between 50 and $70, depending on how big uh, you get it. Um, and then of course, you know, your chair, your keyboard height, all of that stuff that has to do with ergonomics, you want to make sure that you're comfortable so that if you are having several meetings and you're using your computer a lot that you can be comfortable in doing so. Um, number three, a very, very big thing is you need to take breaks. Even when you're just doing an hour and 15 minute class or, you know, the meeting's not going to be that long, taking breaks between meetings is ideal. So as much as is possible when you schedule things, have a built-in break. When you take that break, it has to be a real break. Don't check your email. Don't 
be looking on your phone. Don't, you know, do some gentle stretching, especially, you know, your neck muscles. You want to make sure that you can keep that limber, your shoulder, roll your shoulders down, check your posture, stand up, walk around either in your home, your office. If you have enough time, you can actually take a real walk, getting the circulation going, any kind of gentle stretching on your legs and your lower back shoulders and your neck because those all um, get stressed out when we're sitting at a computer a lot right you can do some finger stretching because if you're using a mouse and keyboard a lot which we've been doing for quite a while using computers but you know when we're in these meetings all the time we may not notice um, we're gonna take a break in a little bit um, and I'm going to explain uh, what I want you to do on that break. Before we get to that, though, one of the big things, too, is in this medium is to do things that are fun. And we're going to do that today when we come back from our break. But having fun using Zoom, my friends and I will get together and we'll play board games on Zoom, like Clue or I don't think we played Monopoly, but we've, you know, just board games that aren't going to take, you know, 10 hours to play, like Risk or something. But, you know, especially with your friends and family, do those kinds of things, um, you know, play a song for someone or just different things that you can do that makes this fun, right? Um, so we're going to take a five minute break. During that break, I want you to stand up, get your circulation going if you have to march in place. Do some gentle stretching on your neck and your shoulders if you have to your back your hands and for at least 30 seconds of that five minutes i want you to close your eyes don't look at anything give your visual um i don't know if it's visual cortex trenton can correct me if i'm wrong but give it a break don't look at anything for at least 30 seconds and um when you're actually in meetings, one way you can take a break is to look away from the screen about once every 10 minutes. Just, you know, look at the wall for, you know, 15, 20 seconds. But for now, for our five minute break, like I said, get up, get your circulation going, do a little stretching, and for at least 30 seconds, close your eyes. Do not check email, do not look at your phone, take a break, okay? So five minutes, you guys can turn off your cameras if you want, and then we'll come back at, what is that, about 11.57, okay? So take a break.
Okay, so hopefully you guys were able to do a little stretching, stand up, close your eyes for 30 seconds to take a break, kind of refresh yourself. So now we're going to do something fun, okay? We're going to help you figure out what your Star Wars name is. And I don't know if you, any of you have ever heard of this, if you've ever done it, if you already have a Star Wars name, but I've had one for quite a while. And uh, it's just a fun thing to do. It has nothing to do with work or anything. And that's the thing that we need to keep in mind too when we're using Zoom a lot is think of things that you can use Zoom for that has nothing to do with, you know, I gotta concentrate, I gotta work, have fun, right? Okay, so how do you make a Star Wars name? It's very, very simple. So if you need to get out a piece of paper and a pen to write it down, or if you want to do it on your computer, however you want to do it. Um, after we do this, then we're going to just, when you get your Star Wars name, just put it in the chat. And then we'll sh have some people share. Why Star Wars? Well, I've always been a Star Wars fan. And they happened to be showing yet another Star Wars marathon on TV this past weekend. So it was like, oh, hey, I know. Let's, let's do Star Wars names. OK, how do you do your Star Wars name? So the first three letters of your first name. So in my case, my name's Deanna. First three letters are DEA. And I did this a long time ago before I was ever married. and. Uh, the first two letters of your last name is, for me, it's K-A. You take those two things and that makes your first name. For your last name of your last Star Wars name, I should say, it's the first two letters of your mother's maiden name. In my case, it's W-A. Then you take the first three letters of the city or town in which you were born. In my case, it was Honolulu, so H-O-N. That makes up your Star Wars name. So one and two is your first name of your Star Wars name. Three and four is the last name of your Star Wars name. Now, where are you from? It's a model of your first car. In my case, it was a Celica. So as you can see at the bottom of the screen, my Star Wars name is Dika Wahon of Celica. So now sometimes when you get your letters, it may be a little funky, maybe not enough vowels. You know, you can massage it, manipulate it a little bit so that, you know, there's a little, it makes a little more sense. Uh, we were trying to do that with my husband's Star Wars name because uh, he was like, oh, I was born in Orange County. It's like, you know how big Orange County is? It's not the county, it's what city? Well, he was born in Cucamonga, so that worked out. <laughs> okay, so I'll give you guys a few minutes to figure this out. If anybody wants to ask any questions at this time, we can take care of that as well. Um, if you have questions just in general or about your Star Wars name or whatever, um, just feel free. I see a bunch of people putting stuff in the chat. Oh, people are putting their names in the chat. How oh, cool. Okay, so it looks like almost everyone's done. I'll just give you another minute or so. Hey. There's somebody from my planet here. <laughs> Greetings, Shapo Yawai. <laughs> How goes it back on Celica? <laughs> Just 
Does anyone else need more time? Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and we're gonna look at all of our Star Wars names here. If you look in the chat. Okay, so we have Trenny Chmin of Stylus. Greetings. <laughs> Jadme Alwai of CRV. Oh, that's a very interesting planet, I'll say. Very um, gas efficient planet. No. <laughs> Shapayawai from my own planet of Celica. Joya Tawai of Accord. Lebi Nawai of Ford. It's Ford is the make. What model do you have? Did you have? That's what your planet is. We have how should we pronounce Stehe, Sti, Alsen of Accord? We got a couple people from the planet Accord. Debmik Claw of Camaro. Jamwa Pekai of Volkswagen. What was the model of the Volkswagen? Because keep in mind, make is the brand name, right? Volkswagen, Ford, Chevy, whatever. So was it a Beetle or Jetta? Jetta is always a cool planet to be from, right? Same with Nissan. We have Shaka Nahon. Oh, that's the best name, Shaka. Awesome. <laughs> but a Nissan what would be your planet, right? It's the model, not the make. Durs Kaor of Corsica. Oh, that is such a cool sounding planet. Checo Macau of Ford. Again, right? We're looking at the mate, the model, not the make. Joado Kawai of Volvo. Same with Volvo. What kind of Volvo? There we go. So we have Lady Nawai of Escort. Jamo Pekai of Beetle. Very cool. Shaka Nahon of Sentra and Checo Macau of Escort. Very nice. All right. So at this time, I'd be happy to take any questions. Um, if you guys have come across any techniques on um, how to, you know, take a break effectively, how to keep yourself sane during all this Zooming, um, anything or if you just want to share a Star Wars story so I'll just share mine very quickly um, I saw the original Star Wars back in 1977 uh, at Kapilani Theater uh, on Kapilani Avenue Boulevard whatever they call it which is no longer there it's something else I think it's some gym um, and that Halloween I was Luke Skywalker he's always been my favorite character Anyone else want to share something? Or if you have questions. I have a quick question. Yeah. So I have this um, blue. Yeah. And um, it works good, but it seems, and I have Max, it seems that I'm not using it right now because last time I did a Zoom meeting, people were having trouble hearing me. So I went in and tried to crank up the, the, you know, volume or whatever, but it still seemed very, very low. Any advice on, do I have to like go into my settings and, and increase the volume? Let me check because we have um, a couple of snowballs here. Okay. So let me seems, see. Yeah. It seems on both of my laptop and my, my desktop Mac, they, it seems that it's very, very low. Um, it really isolates sound very well, but yeah. I notice I have to speak very loudly. Okay. Uh, do me a favor. Uh, just email me what the model of that one is, and then I'll check it out and see what else is going on. And it's 
Um, Cause I know there are different models of snowballs. Right. Okay. Yeah. And then, like I said, I'll check it out with ours too, to see if that may, it may be a snowball issue. I know somebody who uses snowball that I communicate with on the weekends and he doesn't seem to have any problems. Okay. So okay. yeah. Yeah. Thanks. And that's a plug-in, right? Yeah, okay. So Derek has a suggestion about sometimes if the Bluetooth is on, it can impact other equipment oh. for sound. Okay. Um, so you can try and check. Um, so turn my Bluetooth off, in other words, while right. I'm trying to use the microphone. Oh, okay. Right. Well, I have not tried that yet. All right. Yeah, that's that's one quick thing that you can try. I had a quick question um, regarding just closed captioning for Zoom. So I think with some of the Google, I forget what Google's calling it now. Google. Google Meet. Google Meet has really good closed captioning. Zoom not so much. So there's like some third party things you can do for Zoom, but and I know it's you know that kind of balance between wanting to make sure that you're accessible for everybody at the same time, it would seem to me that closed captioning would increase the Zoom exhaustion to some level. Right, because I mean, unless you're deaf and that's the only way you can see it, um, when you're having to read a bunch of closed captioning when you don't have to, it can because that's more visual information that you're taking in. I know I at home when I watch TV, I, my closed captioning's on all the time. And um, so I guess, I don't know, I'm used to it, but at the same time, when I'm at home, I'm very low tech, <laughs> you know? It's like, yeah, I'll check stuff on my phone. I might play a couple of little games, but as much as possible, I try not to turn on my computer or anything like that. And that's one of the things that we, we also need to give ourselves a break with is um, we have to, give ourselves a break from screen time as well. Right. And, you know, my husband's always like, you know, you just watch TV. I said, technically I'm not watching TV. It's just on. And as someone who is in front of screens and behind cameras all day, it's something I can do. That's very passive. I can look away from it. And, you know, the person hasn't walked out of the frame or if they have, it's not my problem. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, the, the one thing too that I, I found is um, I was part of an upward bound presentations. And so some of these had like 150 people in it and the students were presenting. And so what the strategy was for everybody to turn their cameras off except for the presenters. Right. Um, and in a way, I think it kept you from having to just be distracted by looking at everybody's feed. So I think sometimes the cameras off can really help the audience just focus on the speaker or even go into the presentation mode where you're just looking at the, the screen. Right. You, you have it in speaker view so that only the person speaking is up there. And, you know, there's different settings. Um, one of the other things too is hiding the self view yeah. as well. Um, Cause a lot of people don't, most people don't like to look at themselves and stuff like that. So that's another thing. Um, so somebody asked a question about virtual backgrounds. Um, it's up to the individual. Um, I think if the virtual background is appropriate, because the question is about um, from a student perspective and from a teaching perspective, I think if the virtual background is appropriate, then you know there's nothing wrong with using them. The only thing about um, virtual backgrounds that can be distracting is um, it does it in a kind of crude chroma key and chroma key takes out certain colors. So, you know, you might have people's faces that now blend into the background and that can be weird. So um, it just really depends on that background as well. And, you know, you might notice some artifact around the person. So it makes their hair look funky. That could be distracting, but it really is a matter of an individual choice. Um, teachers, when they're teaching, may say no virtual backgrounds. Again, you know, for instructors, 
um, for their classes, they get to set the rules. So it's, it's all up to the instructor. But, you know, the main thing is, is it appropriate? So there's something in the chat uh, it says, Google, would you rather questions as Zoom breakers? Would you rather swim in a pool filled with Nutella or with maple syrup? Yes. Neither. Because Nutella is like crack. It's highly addicting and it's very fattening because it has hazelnuts in it. And maple syrup is pure sugar. It's like, no. <laughs> But yeah, so think of different fun things that you can do on Zoom. And yes, green screens do help with having a crisper virtual background. All righty. Anything else? I don't want to keep you long because yes, I, when Joyce first asked me to do this, I laughed and I said, ha ha, we're going to do it exhausted from Zoom in Zoom. <laughs> it's that ironic or not, you know? <laughs> so I don't want to keep you guys take a break. I know some people have to rush off to other meetings so they don't get a break, but if you're able to take a break, screen break, even if it's just closing your eyes for 30 seconds, you know, give yourself a break. That's one of the things that we need to keep in mind with all this zooming going on. All right. Thank you everyone for coming. And you can always email me if you have questions and stuff like that. So is Dika Wahan of Celica saying, <laughs> I don't know. I haven't figured out how to say goodbye in, you know, my language. 